Have you ever wondered what happens when you cram 150 pounds of boost into a factory 12 valve Cummins engine? Well, I did it and something broke. Let's figure out what happened. This is the 12 valve Cummins engine out of my 1995 Dodge Ram, also known as the Junker drag truck. We got a 472 SXE compounded with a custom Garrett GT55. It's a big 116 millimeter unit. Little hood stack action. We got uh, some electric radiator fans. This is a power driven 6.1 liter stroker 12 valve. Mission motor intercooler. And I have to say, very, very impressed with the Mission motor intercooler. 150 pounds of boost is what we saw in the dyno today. I took it down to an, a dyno event. smacked like 1360 to the tire at the dyno. Not my best. And uh, then they had a sand drag event after that. So I put some scoops on my two wheel drive truck. Mind you, it weighs 5,300 pounds. And we kicked some butt. There was a full blown sand drag through there. He had bigger scoops than I did. He had nitrous, big block power. I think he said he weighed 2,100 pounds. But you know what? I kicked his butt once or twice too. He also beat my butt a couple times too, but long story short, big overdrive shift. I mean, I'm hitting overdrive in a 200 foot sand drag. I mean, we're getting some serious tire speed and uh, bogged the engine down pretty hard. It didn't like it and it started having a little miss. Next thing I know, miss got a little worse, started mixing fluids. I thought, hey, Maybe we uh, hurt the head gasket, maybe we cracked the head, put a little oil into the coolant. So uh, brought it home, pulled the head off and no dice, we cracked the block. So today we're gonna tear down the engine out of my truck. It's best number 155 pounds of boost is most we put in this motor, uh, 1502 horsepower to the tire. Oh, 1502. 2450-ish foot-pounds of torque to the tire. So this is a monster engine, factory block. In fact, it's the original one out of the truck. It has 300,000 miles on it. Um, it has a, you know upgraded rotating assembly, one of our ported heads and stuff on there. But really, it's, it's a build that the average guy could do in his garage. So let's take it apart. Let's see what the bearings look like. Let's see if the rods are straight. Let's check out the crank. This is also a 6.1 liter stroker. All right, we're gonna get a little personal with my engine here. Come in close and let's check out. So the number one cylinder is what cracked. And as we can see here, now the block is firing. That's what this groove is. That's where all the fire is sealed with a metal ring. Right here, there's a crack. It goes down on the bore about an inch and a quarter or so. Comes up through here, through the head stud hole, and then clear through over here into the coolant jacket. So this is allowing coolant to mix with engine oil. I'm not as good at destroying blocks as Todd because he like rips them in half. Who's got the piston? You know, I just got a little 12 millimeter pump and a couple turbos. I'm not doing anything crazy here. So let's finish tearing this pig down. I'll show you how to tear down a 12 valve Cummins. Uh, minus the cylinder head removal because I already did that in frame, hoping it was a head gasket or a cracked head and uh, no dice. First place I like to start is uh, drain the fluid. Let's just say it was some nasty black sludge coming out. When you mix coolant and oil, it's no good. This is my Mr. Gasket crank, crank, crankcase breather. I made this like, I don't know, 15 years ago. <laughs> it's copper pipe that I soldered because all I knew how to do was solder. So it's threaded in that, and then I needed a way to cap it. So it's a rubber hose with a uh, Mr. Gasket breather. This is like, you know, old school, cheap hot routing back in the day. You know, it's called the Junker Drag Truck for a reason. I had this thing running 10 seconds with four grand in the truck, including buying it. See this uh, Predator lift pump? This puts a lot more volume of fuel through the injection pump. 
there she be miss america that's the omega that's a little bit bigger one big fluid damper oh yeah Ooh, look at this here's first damage you see this it's called fretting so it sheared this dowel and then these ones are broke off too see that this first time i've had this happen on my truck happens a lot on like todd's big power you know 2000 plus horsepower truck it's so much trouble with these there's a diamond impregnated washer you can put there and it basically becomes it's like a sandpaper and it becomes a sacrificial layer so that you don't get the fretting and then it also grips tighter so next time if i go back at this power level i'm going to have to put a a, a diamond washer sandwiched in there so right here, this is the fretting. See how this is taller than crank? So that's metal that's transferred from the fluid damper onto here. Then this is the right height, and there's more fretting here. But what I'm most concerned about, one, the 6.7 crank is expensive. So I've got to try to put this in the lathe and face this off. But two, I've got broken dowels in there. And then the third one, that's open. So I guess I could drill two new dowel holes here. Yeah, hope I can save it. That's expensive. Those cranks are not cheap. I don't care where you buy them. They're 2000 plus for a Cummins crank, so. Water pump. Look at this oily coolant mix. <laughs> Water pump's fine. Too bad. All right, this is important. This is the killer dowel pin retainer. So, the Achilles heel of every 12 valve Cummins. Killer dowel pin right here is a dowel and it drops from vibration. Adjustable timing gear. Power driven makes these. So you're asking yourself, how much timing was I running when the block split? 40 degrees. Just kind of walk that on and off. So it's got a little O-ring seal. There's the injection pump there. Oh, doesn't that look yummy? That's the oil cooler. The sludge from it uh, blowing up and mixing oil in the coolant. Voila. We have an oversized pickup tube. This is an exclusive part of Power Driven Diesel. We found at high RPM, the factory pickup tube's too small and it starts cavitating. And so we uh, made an oversized pickup tube. That's only for 12 valves. The newer 24 valves, like the common rails, they already have a big pickup tube from the factory. But uh, these ones, they start at like, oh, I think they're either three quarter or seven eighths is the stock one. And this one's a full inch. Let's get this off first. Seven eighths. Yep. Stiffen our plate there. All right, I'm really interested to see what the rod bearings look like. So we got the rods right here ready to go. Usually I take the cam out first, but I, I can't wait. I gotta, I gotta see. So um Number six, well, number one's one that cracked. Let's take number one out and see if it had extreme load. Now, these are the Waggler Street Fighter rods. And they have a, a half inch rod bolt. And the rod cap always gets stuck, but if you loosen the rod bolt and then smack it with a dead bolt, it'll push the rod. It'll basically separate the cap like that for you. And you can get it separated easily. Now this is the non-loaded side that just handles RPM load, not the big power. You can see here we got a little bit of uh, got some scuffing, but not too bad. These are a Molly H bearing, and so they kind of have like a, a dull. Wherever it's shiny is where it's kind of rubbed a little bit. But I mean, it's not even close to showing copper or anything. It's just just a little little worn. Um, could be mild debris getting through there. It does have a little tiny bit of scuffing on the journal here, but 
nothing I would, like if I pulled apart a, this engine and saw that, I wouldn't think that's a problem to even address. But we'll see what the power side of the rod looks like next. Oh, out the bottom she comes. All right, let's see here. So the non-slip coating on the skirt actually looks pretty good on that face. This face got a little bit of, a little bit of rub, but that is the side it thrusts against when it makes power. Um, yeah, overall I would say that looks fine. Usually when we get really big power, we will break this middle ring land will crack because these are cast pistons. They're not really designed for 1500 horsepower. But if you have the right ring gap so that they don't butt and it seals in the bore so that the top ring takes most of the force, that has a steel ring land groove. It can handle a lot of power. The second one just has cast aluminum below it and it's thin. If you have the right ring gap and your ring seal looks okay, um, where the top ring's taking most of the brunt, you can do it. Still have good tension on the rings, so I wouldn't say that we, I mean, they're not as good as brand new, but um, they're still, still got good tension, runnable. Then the bearing here on the power side, I mean, it's got a little bit of, little bit of shiny there, but still at this power level, I would be, that's totally acceptable to me. This, uh, this engine would have lived a lot longer. All right, we're gonna pull the cam out next. Um, it's not too hard. There, there's windows in the cam gear here. We're gonna take out these two 13 millimeter headed bolts. These are little metric M8 bolts. We're gonna pull those out. Those are holding a retainer that keeps the cam. I have the engine upside down because then gravity helps keep all the tappets down so the cam will come out and not catch the tappets. Okay, now those two little bolts are out. Now the cam can come out. Here's the cam. This is a steel cam. And we run this upgraded brass thrust retainer on it. Brass just is kind of self-lubricating. Steel ones, you can kind of gall and mess up the cam sometimes if you turn a lot of RPM on a stock retainer. So, well, $80 part that saves your cam. It's got a little tiny bit of galling on the nose right there. So I bet that lifter's starting to get some damage on it. See the little scuffing there? Okay, so number five had some wear. Here's the number five tap it. See how it's um, got damage on it? You see how it's chewed up? Look at the number five intake. Mirror smooth. Number five exhaust is a problem child. Let's pull it out and see what it looks like. You can see how it's just not smooth. The very center isn't hurt, but all this edge here is getting beat up. So that's why that lobe has a tiny bit of damage on it. Maybe the lash was misadjusted on that one, so it wasn't um, getting good slack on the base circle. Sometimes that happens, or maybe this tappet's a little bit soft, or uh, maybe we're right on the verge where we need DLC coated tappets. But generally, we don't say you need those to about 1500 horsepower, I guess right where this was. So um, maybe next time around, I'll do uh, DLC tappets. No galling or scuffing, so we weren't eating a bunch of debris on our oil pump. This is a 25% oversized oil pump we were testing on this truck. Seemed to be a success. All right, what does the main bearing look like? Let's come take a look. This is the side that takes all the power, so it's the bottom. So we got a little little bit of scuffing, but uh, nothing that I am even remotely worried about. Let's see how the other ones look. All right, look at this center one. Usually when we're spinning high RPM, this center main is where we have the most wear. What happens is the crank whips a little bit in the middle like a jump rope, and it'll start wiping this. The only way we've found to get rid of this is with a stronger girdle. The other thing that can shows up is when the dampener comes loose. Sometimes we see this more often. And if you remember, my dampener is all fretted. So 
um, this crank could have been jumping a little because it was moving the dampener on the end couldn't dampen the vibration it was building up some harmonics in the middle the other thing we're looking for in the main caps if you come in kind of tight here and i do not see any fretting on here so i'd say we had adequate uh main stud strength which you should with that big of a main stud at 1500 horsepower getting kind of weak in my old age 150 pound crank all right Are you filming in case i hurt my back I think the crank is great other than we're going to have to surface the top there to fix this fretting so we can have a fresh surface diamond washer and then we got to try to retrieve those broken dowels but otherwise the crank looks good so this is the top main and this is also the thrust bearing if you have a lot of line pressure in your transmission the uh, torque converter will swell up and push forward and it will push on this main bearing and wipe it out. But uh, as you can see, it's a little bit copper, so it's got the, uh, the little nickel coating off there, or zinc or whatever it is, but it's not, uh, I mean, it's nowhere near deep. And I'll bet the end play was maybe five thousandths, you know, well within spec. I think your max spec's like 14. But if we get a really high powered truck with a big torque converter 300 line pressure you can swell we can wipe out a, a thrust like that in two drag strip rounds all right our final inspection for this engine we want to take a look at the cylinder bores um, when you're making a lot of power they distort and move so there's going to be some scuffing and stuff in the bores what i've noticed right now glancing at this i have a lot more scuffing in cylinder number six and number one those cylinders get the hottest and if you kind of look here all that vertical scuffing is because we ran out of ring gap the ring butted and got tight in the cylinder see how number five doesn't have nearly as much as number six because i hot lapped this i think i had adequate ring gap but not adequate ring gap for me to abuse it doing hot lap sand dragging and when it gets hot, everything grows. And so basically we lost all that little extra bit of clearance we had. And I'll bet the rings butted just a little bit on number six and number one. Generally, those are the first two cylinders we see butt. So normally when you're building an engine like this, you'll put an extra thousandth of piston to wall clearance in one, in number one and number six. Shoot, I have this backwards. This is number one that we're seeing the scuffing on. I have the engine flipped around. But yeah. Six, same story. <laughs> that wraps up this teardown.